Your dream job is waiting for you. Go get it with an MBA or specialized master's degree from the University of Denver's Business School. Our programs prepare you for a lifetime of professional success. We've assembled extraordinary resources to deliver on that mission. Business savvy faculty, a vibrant network of alumni, and out of the classroom learning. Most of our graduates secure a promotion or a new role within six months following graduation. Commit to advancing yourself. Apply today at daniels.du.edu slash Pandora. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2127. A saving strategy that works by Derek Van Ness of biglifefinancial.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hello and welcome to another bonus Sunday episode where I share an article from one of the other podcasts in our network that I think will add some value for you here. Today's post comes from Optimal Finance Daily where articles covering all facets of personal finance are read to you every day. And you can find Optimal Finance Daily wherever you're listening to this. Please subscribe or follow to get episodes every day. And with that, here's Diana with the post and commentary as we optimize your life. A saving strategy that works by Derek Van Ness of biglifefinancial.com. Everyone knows that saving money is important. We all understand that it is the basis of creating financial stability and a prerequisite to having money to invest. Yet the vast majority of people in the US aren't saving anything. In fact, according to CNBC, a staggering 78% of full-time workers said they're living paycheck to paycheck. In case you don't speak financial jargon, I'll translate. They aren't saving. I'm sure they want to save, but they just can't seem to make it happen. It seems understandable because we all have car repairs, home maintenance, activities for the kids, and everyone needs a 75-inch TV, right? At some point, you've probably felt like every time you're about to get ahead, something comes up and you're back to where you started. Sound familiar? If you are part of the 78%, or even if you aren't, then it's time to listen up because this simple skill of saving is literally the difference between people who become financially independent and the other 78%. Now, before you say anything, I'm gonna tell you something you don't wanna hear. The difference between financial success and a double-digit bank account is not about how much money you make. Seriously, it's not. How much money you make does matter, but it's not the most important factor once you get above the poverty line. I've worked with a lot of people that make over $500,000 a year that are broke. Yep, they're living paycheck to paycheck just like everyone else. That may seem impossible, but it's true. In every single case I encountered, it's because they never learned how to save. The reality is, if you never learn to save, then you're learning to spend every dollar you make. It's that simple. If you make more, you spend more. It's very easy to spend an extra 10, 20, $50,000 a year by simply having a slightly nicer house, car, vacation, and eating out a little more often. So by the time you're making 40 grand a month, you have a really nice house, kids in private school, some great trips in your photo albums, and two beautiful cars in the garage but almost nothing in the bank. Simply put, saving needs to be a first priority and a conscious effort or it rarely works. That doesn't mean it needs to be grueling or difficult. It just needs to be planned and intentional. Here's the simplest way to begin saving right away. From here forward, immediately set aside 20% of every dollar into a savings account. If you can't do 20% right now, then start with 10. Don't wait till the end of the month. Instead, transfer the money as soon as you get paid. You may have heard of the phrase, pay yourself first. This is what it means. Most people make the mistake of trying to cut back spending all month and save whatever's left. If you've ever tried this, you know it doesn't work. I've personally talked with thousands of people who've tried it, and the answer is always the same. There's never any left. Bottom line, you have to save first and learn to live on the rest. Even if you're barely making ends meet, begin putting money in the savings account. If you save first, you'll begin to strengthen your saving muscles. You can always pull the money back out of savings for an emergency, so don't let fear keep you from learning to save. Soon enough, you'll begin to see the money build up in your savings account and you'll be on your way. The best part is that seeing your savings account grow gets really exciting. 
It takes time, but watching the balance go up each month will reconfirm that you're doing the right thing and help you stay on track. If you do this, then as you make more, you save more. More importantly, it becomes a habit that will serve you the rest of your life. Having money in the bank means you get better loans and interest rates. You don't have to put emergency expenses on credit cards and you won't ever get backed into a bad situation because you have a safety net in your savings account. So if you aren't saving 20% of what you earn now, it's time to start. In fact, if you can automate your savings by having your bank set up an automatic transfer or a sweep, that's even better. Once you get started, you'll be amazed at how fast things change. You just listened to the post titled, A Saving Strategy That Works by Derek Van Ness of BigLifeFinancial.com. When did life start getting so complicated? Buying a home? Complicated. Home finances? Certainly not a walk in the park. Raising kids? Yeah, it's a lot. Then there's insurance. What if my policy doesn't cover this? Or what if I make a claim in the middle of the night? Good news. State Farm is there for your what ifs. So even if life gets tricky, insurance doesn't have to be. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for your quote today. So I've noticed that when people start to get interested in improving their financial situation, they ask a lot of questions about investing. While investing is super important and maybe the sexier part of the financial equation, the more you save, the more you're able to invest. And it really boils down to having a mindset that values savings over spending and simply making it a habit. I used to think saving money for the future was a bit dull. So when I first started to save more, it was helpful to have a specific goal to save for. I wanted to walk the Camino de Santiago, which is a 500 mile trek across Spain. And so I needed to account for two months of no income while maintaining my cost of my fixed expenses and the cost of the trip itself. Having a big audacious goal at the forefront of my mind made those daily decisions around spending and saving so much easier. As my mindset changed over time, I realized that while we're all wired for instant gratification and consumerism certainly scratches that itch, saving money is still buying you something. You're buying a little bit of freedom and peace of mind every time you save money. And that'll do it for today. Have a great day and start to your weekend. And I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.